This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level 0 NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. I gotta do my, uh, my, my, uh, every time we do this, um, pee break. So so this is going to be a regular segment. The, well, he, the I don't know time where Alex, Julia, and I shoot the shit while Matt's in the bathroom. <laughs> well, it's one of those things, right? Like I don't know why I've just been drinking like way more water lately, uh-huh. and I'm just like that's something I need to do more of. So I just I drinking more water, and now I'm like now I have to piss all the time. <sighs> you also are you're in your forties, like <laughs> oh my god. You're, you're you're half you're half you're halfway to ninety. Your bladder doesn't stay the same size. Yeah, you're, ha- you're halfway dead, bud. <laughs> you're yeah. only half. How much have you fucking been through in your life that you're only halfway? Oh god! Does it not seem unfathomable that you can have another forty-five to go? Oh, yeah, that's that seems good. crazy to me. That's good. I'm gonna have to fix something to get there. But I think you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't think you're ever gonna die. I can't imagine that happening. I know, but I am the I am a, one of those brightest lights kinds of guys. <laughs> so it's, it's gonna happen. I think you could. I, like I can't imagine you dying except by mishap. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a yeah, <laughs> like falling out of a window, or a rolling pin to the head. I think crazier than that, but yes. I'm spending too much time in this episode. I need to go. I'll be right back. I'm well, going to refill my coffee while Matt's gone. Oh, that only take me a second, though. Oh my goodness! Nice. We're going to let we're going to we're going to let you. We're going to have go. an intellectual fucking conversation. And it's going to be inscrutable. Well, Wait I'm ready for it. I'm ready Wait, for it. Yeah. Are you implying that you can't have one with <laughs> Alex? And I? I'm not implying that we can't. I'm implying that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Because I actually, yeah, I had yeah. something I did want to uh, talk to you about, Luke. Because I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm planning on going to GDC for the first time ever in March, and I wanted nice. to know if you've ever been and if you have any tips and helpful hints. I've been a few times. Um, really, I mean, the it, it's it's gonna seem and feel fairly obvious, but like the thing about GDC um, and a lot of big industry events there is that you really want to make sure that you're reviewing what talks are gonna mm-hmm, be. Mm-hmm at what time and make sure that you schedule them out ahead of time Mm -hmm. and also like plan for breaks Mm -hmm. um like gdc is it's not as exhausting as e3 um like e3 is just like it's a it's a zoo well never again i heard yeah (laughs) well okay i guess that's true yeah i uh i guess i should consider myself lucky that i've been to a couple Mm -hmm. of e3s in my career but um yeah, GDC, it, it is more sedate. It is more sort of for the industry than mm-hmm. like E3 was. But um, yeah, you're um, you're definitely going to want to um, just find find the talks that are really interesting to mm-hmm. you. Um, go attend those ones. Um, shit, I forget like um, if there is like separate entry fees and stuff like that. But GDC Vault, if you go to, if you attend GDC you can get access to the GDC vault as like part of your ticket price. I think that's where the real value oh, yeah? of GDC is. Cause there's so much more content mm-hmm. than you will physically be able to attend. So going back and um, looking at like the stuff that you missed in GDC vault is absolutely worth mm-hmm. your time. Um, I spent a lot of my time um, sort of throughout my career um, reviewing talks that I didn't have the opportunity to go and check. Oh, hey. We did something accidentally, hey. which I guess is yeah, the whole thing we, uh, with this one. Yeah, we came upon Seely in the... Uh... I've been back since you said the thing about GDC <laughs> several minutes ago. I just didn't oh, didn't say anything because I was interested. <laughs> and I've been I back hate, since uh, Alex says I've been back since the thing about GDC that, that just got back. <laughs> that just got back. Nice. Welcome, I, welcome. I find planning any sort of itinerary quite stressful mm-hmm. because uh, like you have this great plan and then it meets the reality of the situation and all the stress you spent planning it meets the stress of living it and just yeah. turns into just just a shambles into chaos. <laughs> <laughs> well, the nice thing about GDC is that there are a lot of interesting talks, mm-hmm. right? Um, of various different... Um, 
various different topics, right? Like it, it's almost divided by like discipline. So if you're into production, then production mm -hmm. chat, production talks are a thing. Round tables are fucking great. Um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of my career, when I've attend quote unquote attended GDC, it's actually been attending like the space adjacent to GDC. Like so many of my GDCs in the past were always spent like at a hotel nearby having meetings. Mm, okay. um, the last GDC I went to, I didn't actually even go to the GDC um, uh, place once. Um, I spent my entire time demoing Myth Force right. to uh, the media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, in a in a little hotel um, business room um, thing. Um, which was a great experience. Like it was great meeting a bunch of like uh, folks and and showing it off. But uh, yeah, like um, if you have the opportunity to go to GDC independently mm -hmm. without sort of the expectation that you're going to do a bunch of meetings and you know, try to sell shit to people, mm -hmm. right? Services or uh, publishing or whatever. Um, that's probably the best kind of GDC that you mm -hmm. can go to. Also. Um, if GDC is still being held in San Francisco, and I'm pretty sure yep. it always yep. is. Yep. Um, yeah. San Francisco is just an amazing town. Mm. Go see the sites. Mm -hmm. um, you know, e enjoy the food. Go to the, you know, uh, waterfront and mm -hmm. have yourself a sourdough, sourdough bread bowl. Yes. Chowder. I've been told that. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Thank you. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's probably not so relevant unless you're trying to, like, you know, secure a publisher. But I, I imagine, like, if you were looking for a publisher, probably Adventure X is a better place for that <laughs> than, like, uh, GDC would mm -hmm. be. But, mm -hmm. yeah. There are sort of business meeting things that uh, happen all around the, uh, the event. I have a question about this hexagonal chapel. <laughs> yep. That window is not behind the pulpit because the pulpit is on a vertex of the hexagon rather than against one of the faces of the hexagon. <clears throat> um, That's true. So that pulpit is on the vertex of those two edges. Is there a window we can't see on the nearer edge? Yeah. Uh, oh, like so matching like that one like two big eyes two big stained glass eyes yeah because i was looking at this and i was like why the fuck wouldn't they put the window window behind the pulpit uh but then i thought well maybe there's a window we can't see and the pulpit is between them and that might be better so the person isn't like obscured by light or whatever but uh yeah that's my basically my question is this is there a second window we can't see on the nearer phase mm -hmm. of the hexagon such that the pulpit is between them or does this little chapel just suck well, the exterior shot of this, I think, shows like on this these nearer walls, the window exterior windows. But we just not the thing is, is we're not seeing the light come in from those ones on the floor, which is kind of misleading. Hmm. Potentially, Although, you know, light only really comes in from one direction. Yeah, like the moon is on the other side. Moonlight, yeah, yeah, but, it's true. Um, but like the other thing that sort of occurs to me is like the the length of the sides of this hexagon are not consistent with one another. <laughs> The game like, has enough subtle pers uh, perspective issues that I, like, this was, like, the least of my worries about perspective, but you are correct. It's yeah, an irregular the, the hexagon, for sure. The pulpit goes a, just short of halfway down this wall, probably maybe even to the one-third, you know, or maybe, like, uh, yeah, like the one-third mark-ish, because there's a whole-ass door next to it on this side, and it, only, and it goes, like, two-thirds of the way on this side. Uh, and there's certainly nothing here. So, yeah, it's just, it's a, it is an, a, a weirdly oblong hexagon. I do like that this little chapel occupies exactly one RPG hex, though. I think that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is the old plantation old. chapel. Oh, that is also old. <laughs> Above the pulpit, you see a beautiful stained glass window. Look at window. You see a gorgeous stained glass window. Look I don't like the singular. 
Celie sits in a pew before the pulpit, her head bent in fearful prayer. Ask about what is happening. <laughs> this game does not understand happening. Damn straight Talk it doesn't. To <laughs> Oh, what are you doing here, girl? Something mighty terrible is happening. Evil spirit is all around us. I think we're uh, going to die before this night is over. We are going to die. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's thats much more perceptive than anyone else has been. That's true. Tell about... Jesus, which corpse do we want to talk about? The latest? Clarence. Yeah. Celie's not listening to you. She's visibly frightened and deep in prior. That's the uh, the name of my autobiography. <laughs> Deeply fr frightened Vis and deep in prayer. <laughs> visibly frightened and deep in prayer. The Alex <laughs> Hicks story. Show rolling pin mm. to Celie. It's a terrible name because I'm uh, an atheist. <laughs> Tell about rolling Seely's not listening to you. Use rolling pin on Seely. Flatten Seely. What do you want to do with this rolling pin? Roll Seely <laughs> with, with pin. <laughs> pin. Oh. He does not understand roll. Rolling pin Seely with rolling mm -hmm. pin. <laughs> It, that, I suppose that is the pre correct verb for rolling pin. <laughs> that is not understood. That's that's kind Ask. of a um, an infinite grammar there because rolling pin contains conjugation of the verb to roll. So using rolling pin as the verb. <laughs> Hi everybody! Ask what I can actually do in this game. I does not understand actually. Hi. I'm still here. <laughs> so we got some comments uh, from our videos last week about saving Christmas, and I re-listened to those episodes, and uh, I had compared saving Christmas to like uh, to like jury duty, where everyone's got to do it. But I'm starting to think it's more like uh, visiting Narnia or killing Pennywise because I have no memory of those events. Those comments were. Very confusing until I rewatched the episodes. Yeah. Uh, but I gather that uh, it was much like when you visit Narnia. When you get back, it's a really big deal for a while. Then your life just kind of goes on and you forget about it. Although, uh, uh, Natal Miral has a story from when they saved Christmas. So maybe not I guess everybody. That still matches the Narnia Pennywise analogy, though, because the idea is that the memories go away until you need them again. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't. I still don't appreciate having my memory tampered with, though. That certainly does not improve my opinion of Santa. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it sounds like uh, they had a better time than us. <laughs> But a slightly more confusing time. Slightly ours more was, confusing. Ours was manic and eventful, but relatively straightforward in what we had to do. Like, like I gather we were fighting a lot of time Nazis, and I don't imagine anyone would doubt what side they were on in that circumstance. Yeah, yeah they, this one was different. Also, uh, we do have a question for um, Saving Christmas, I guess. <laughs> a question for Christmas. I feel now terribly oh, wow. inequipped oh, wow. to answer that. <laughs> if you whipped out a 12 op questions for. <laughs> God. Part of me was hoping that 12 op really did make the legally distinct <laughs> from Rocket Around the Christmas Tree. <laughs> It would have been a hell of a thing to bust out right now. But that, no, I figured killing space Nazis or time Nazis is pretty glorious. Also, that question for Glory, it's so goddamn good. I missed Music, it so oh, much. Yeah. It, it, it is it oh. is a pity not to use it every once in a while. I time, agree. So. Um, did we have a slogan? It's like, I guess it's a tradition for each group to have one, but the language barrier made devising one pretty much an impossibility for uh, their group. So I'm just... Uh, curious to know what we chose. 
guy, we did have one. Can anyone remember what it was? The, t- the memory so thing like, has happened to me. Like, I can't. I know. I, like, I, I really try to remember my comment about the Nazis sort of speaking cartoon German rather than German. When I heard myself say that on the episode, that did, like, kind of ring a bell. But the only phrase I could really conjure, like, what they were saying is they seem to have, like, the one English word phrase they seem to know was something like, I was only following orders. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like, the one English phrase they seem to all know. But, like, I, I'm only getting, like, f- like, fits and snatches of it. I really don't know if we had a catchphrase. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, I'm sure we did. I'm positive we did. Because it's us. We definitely did. I just it's Can fine. any of you find the magic item you supposedly received? Because I've been looking and I'm guessing it must have been like a mundane looking item, but now it is lost among my possessions. There is a it could... very, very hard lump in my back. And a <laughs> scar. <laughs> I feel like maybe I put it in my skin. <laughs> uh, um, it's a good way not to lose it, I guess. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I'm just. I keep forgetting it's there, and then I'll feel like tremendous pain, and then I'll just go about my life again. You know. Anyway. Anyway, so I'm so sorry about the. Uh, any- I'm afraid. I'm afraid we don't remember. Um, yeah. You know. We'll we'll try to re- like if it happens again. Statistically unlikely, but if it happens again, we'll try to remember what the catchphrase also, was. Also, like in a, in a year's time or several months, something might just come up and we'll just remember it. But yeah. until then, you know, it's just one of it's the, the Pennywise the Narnia rules. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so true. It sounds like you had a better time of it though. Yeah. Like you know. Like building something with a bunch of strangers. Mm -hmm. That does sound like confusing, though, and probably stressful in its own way. And also the elves were still there, so. I liked it better our way, I think, for me anyway. I'm glad I don't remember them, but that was a haunting portrait that Matt drew. Uh, Yeah, actually. (laughs) Funny story. There was a measurable drop-off in retention. (laughs) We We were talking about our viewer retention, which is pretty good, honestly, considering we have, like, hour-long episodes. But... (gasps) Oh, hey. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Who dat? Also, 2.15 oh. in the fucking morning. Oh, no. Someone has shot Lillian to death in the hedge garden. Quite afraid now. You fear greatly for your own life. Huh. I wasn't expecting Lillian to go. Maybe she shot herself in the head and then real quick threw the gun into the fountain. <laughs> you know the order. silver deringer lying on the ground near She didn't even she just dropped it. Get gun. You're not close enough. You we are. We are That's game. impossible game. <laughs> As you stoop to pick up the derringer, your eye happens to fall upon a bullet not far from Lillian's hand. <gasps> Maybe she tried to jam the bullet into her head. Get bullet. Okay. Maybe she wasn't Load. shot. Maybe she just gripped the bullet between her middle finger and thumb and flicked it hard through her own head. <laughs> <laughs> like Load. fucking Superman. Derringer with bullet. We're definitely going to okay. need this. Yeah. That's our best. Well, okay. Can we? Just clearly, clearly the third step is shoot self in head. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Double tap. This is not understandable. Shoot. Oh, shit. This is not a good use of your one bullet. I love the idea of, like, a chaotic detective where you figure out the mystery, but only so you can make it unsolvable. (laughs) (laughs) That needs to be a thing. With trembling hands, you examine Lillian's body and see the horrible gunshot wound to her chest area. What's this? You suddenly find a skeleton key in a pocket of the old army cape. Oh, she's wearing the old army cape. Since like you it just... may be useful, you take it with you. 
Like just taking heat of the moment murders and turning them into baffling <laughs> mysteries with keys and like letters from the Civil War. <laughs> You just solve the mystery so you can make it a better mystery. Can we look at her boots or something? Because Lillian in fountain. Fountain. (laughs) That's not understood. No, I'm with Julia. Look at her boots. Yeah, does she wear boots with an eagle insignia? These large, muddy-soled army boots look like the old-fashioned kind of thirty years ago. You see a distinct insignia on the boot heels. Uh, examine boot heel with monocle. Man, got it in one. Brushing (laughs) away some of the dried mud, you can plainly see an insignia of an eagle on the boot heels. Oh my god! We did a detection. Lillian. We detected Lillian. Take cape. You don't want that old blood-stained cape. Take boots. Fuck you, I don't. Boots. These boots are much too big for your feet. Take, you can't be that much smaller than Lillian. No, take 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 Lillian's uh, wig. Take Lillian. She would be terribly heavy for you. You shouldn't try it. Take Lillian's. <laughs> take Lillian's head. No, <laughs> you can't get that. Take Lillian's wig. Did she have a wig? I assume so. Just get her teeth, at least. I assume so. It was the 20s. <laughs> huh. Hmm. This is strange. For some reason, Lillian is dressed in an old army officer's cape, hat, gloves, and boots. Well. Get hat. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? No need of a hat. Get gloves. I think it might be time to go get that bell now. <laughs> you don't need any other <laughs> gloves. Roll Lillian into fountain. Game does not understand roll. Divert fountain <laughs> water onto <laughs> Lily. I like how as soon as it doesn't understand something, you mm-hmm. go for something immediately more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Game does not understand divert. Build fulcrum. Doesn't understand build. But it does understand fulcrum. Okay. Yeah, I think the simpler command there is invert fountain so that the entire universe is full of water, <laughs> but the fountain is dry. It's just a, it's pumping it's pumping it's pumping like air into like a fountain shape, but the rest of the universe is underwater. I love that. I love that. Oh, hey, still there. Well, God, if I go two you can't get away, Lillian though, in the I fountain. Bet. You bring the fountain to Lillian. That's true. No, yeah. Yeah. Hey. he just stays there, dead. Um, that's that's nice of them. Well, well, it is weird to shoot yourself in the chest it, if you're going to kill yourself. It is weird, but you know, at least we can use it that does, skeleton I, key on the on the cellar now. I think shooting yourself in the heart is a thing. I think it's a documented thing that people do yes. for complicated reasons. I've seen it. Huh. Not live. Good, <laughs> goodness. Yeah, it makes it sound like you went to like a show of it or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's not what I was picturing at all. Like a one man show where he just sh- he's out to a spotlight and he shoots himself in the chest and everybody claps. <laughs> and then gradually, re- what a way to go out. Everyone gradually realizing that that for real is the well, show. Well, I was in Burnaby. I do have the skeleton key, don't I? Yes, okay. <laughs> look at skeleton. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, we haven't looked at it yet. Look at skeleton key. 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 Oh, look at him. So oh. he's, got a, he's got a nice little skull on it. He looks happy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would be. <gasps> is that Beauregard barking? What? Uh-oh. Oh, goodness. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not Beauregard. No. Uh, where? Barking where? Uh, just, just run. <laughs> you listen intently. Run. Run where? Towards, Towards the barking. Towards where Beauregard's <laughs> barking. But no. Beauregard's not going to be barking back here. Isn't he? Maybe. I swear if this game kills Beauregard. Dear sweet gentle Beauregard. <laughs> Dear, gentle, sweet, gentle, 
Gentle sweet Beauregard. Gentle sweet is one word, of course. <laughs> maybe in the Gent- house? Like maybe Beauregard, no. You're I had no follow up. Upstairs. I had no follow up threat either. I just said mm-hmm. if this game kills Beauregard, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now we've done we see we did too much in the last episode and now things are gonna happen. Yeah. This is what happens when you do stuff. Plot. Yeah, stuff happens. We'll just pause here on the stairs and answer a bunch of yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very us. Really cause someone to to die of stress and anxiety. We're gonna die, aren't we? We so gonna die? Open door. You should you should save the game, eh? Oh, for fuck's sake. I did save very recently with uh You have a skeleton key, don't go downstairs. Yeah, you got the skeleton oh, yeah. key. You can open the thing with the dad. Oh yeah, I was gonna go back to the elevator. <laughs> unlock door. Using the skeleton key, you unlock the attic door. Open door. Hmm? Dope. Uh oh. Oh good, we oh, didn't miss the scuffle. No. Colonel Dijon, Colonel, and Rudy are in the midst of a fierce struggle. You see a hypodermic needle between them, and it's impossible to tell which of the two men is the aggressor. This is indeed a dangerous situation. Shoot both. Shoot them. Shoot both of them. You cannot save a game right now. Shoot self. (laughs) (laughs) does not understand self. That's an amazing answer to this problem, Luke. (laughs) Oh my god. That is truly (laughs) bad shit. I don't know who to shoot. (laughs) Just shoot yourself. Just cake and fondant and icing all over the back wall. They just stop because they're so flabbergasted they don't know what to do now. Uh, <sighs> I'm digging this music though. It's awesome. Yeah, me too. The colonel's out of his chair too. Mm, that's what a liar. Oh yeah. Shoot Colonel in knee cap. Make sure he has to use that fucking chair. <laughs> he does not understand knee cap. Shoot, Shoot Rudy in foot. <laughs> There's so many things we should be doing here. Just even just firing the gun into the mm-hmm. air, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a better <laughs> idea. Shoot self. <laughs> well, okay, so this is where we have to deduce which one is the right one to shoot. I'm assuming. I don't like that the colonel was... Well, no, I guess there's many reasons an elderly person might use a chair, even if they don't need it all of the time. Yeah, I mean, you could need it some of the time. But still, if he's well enough to scuffle with this, you know, with this mustachioed Skeletor voice, dude. Yeah. His um, his name is Rudy. (laughs) That's true. I, I, I... Fuck Bill Cosby. There, I I, I can't just do I can't do the impression and then just be like, what a tribute. Fuck that guy. So like, it, like statistically speaking, the older a man is, the more evil things he's done. <laughs> <laughs> just in terms of white men in general. So like, shoot the colonel, I guess. Yeah, but but Rudy sounds like Skeletor. Yeah, but Skeletor is a overall okay dude, all things considered. All, also, also, <laughs> I don't know if that's true, Luke. <laughs> Did you, didn't you see the Christmas special? <laughs> From what yeah. I know about Skeletor. Well, I'm, I'm thinking specifically about this Christmas. I thought the, he was the he, evil warlock? Yeah. yeah. The, the He-Man and Shira Christmas special. Mind you, I, I only really know from uh, the the recent He-Man show. I didn't really watch it, uh, the, the original run at all, or any of the spin-offs of it. Skeletor seemed almost arbitrarily evil from what I saw. He, 
Okay, so like literally speaking of the uh, the uh, He Man Christmas special, so Skeletor goes on this B plot adventure mm. with a bunch of children, basically Aww. to save Christmas. Evil children or like night normal children? No, like normal children okay. from Mo- Earth, modern from Earth. Earth children. Yeah, Weird. yeah. Well, yeah. well, eighties Earth children, not modern. Yeah. So, oh damn. Yeah. Modern in this in the time of the of the cartoon, and at one point I forget exactly the context or exactly the quote, so I apologize for anybody that I get this wrong about. But they're like, you know, well, you should be good or something like that to him. He's like, no, I like being bad. (laughs) That is his whole uh, his whole like justification of everything. He's like, no, it's more interesting to me to be the bad guy. Yeah, and I respect that about Skeletor. That being said, Rudy did pet Beauregard. That's true. Like I, I'm like I'm on team shoot Colonel, I guess. But I mean, I don't know what's going on. He's dead. You shot and killed Colonel Dijon. Thanks, kid. You saved my life. That old coot lured me up here, and when I wasn't looking, he tried to stick me with a hypodermic needle made from Dr. (laughs) Fields' bag. Made from? (laughs) Made from. (laughs) I hate to think what was in it. Did you know about the others? Well, let me tell you about it. I found out that my uncle lured us all here so he could kill us. He never had any intention of leaving his money to any of us at all. He only wanted to get rid of us. He's been sneaking around here all night, and one by one, he's been murdering everyone. He had us all fooled, let me tell you. He was in a lot better shape than we thought. Well, it's a shame about everyone else, but at least you and I are still alive. I'm sure that this night's been very traumatic for you. (coughs) You go on home in the morning, and I'll stay here a couple more days. If you will. I'd like to contact the authorities in New Orleans and let them know what happened here tonight. (coughs) I need need some ice. Thanks again, kid. Sorry I've been an asshole this whole time. (laughs) This place sucks. It really gets to me. (laughs) The next morning. Uh, calling up all of your potential heirs and murdering them is such a crazy way to deal with that problem. Like, just write a different will. Yeah. <laughs> you just write them all out of the will. Leave it to whoever. Just, you can just write in your will that you want all your shit buried with you like like a pharaoh. Hell, like, he, he presented his will at the beginning of the game. Are you saying yeah. that this is implausible? <laughs> it's just, it's like, I in some ways I almost like respect oh. it. Like it wasn't, it wasn't enough for him to write them out of the will, he had to see them all fucking dead before he dies. That's that's a lot of hate. I made he hated his whole entourage that much. I made the bird scream as he fell off the branch. <laughs> it's fine. Later that same day, so it's only one of those one things. Is oh, as you near the wharf at New Orleans, you consider last night's events. Was Rudy telling you the truth? Oh, well, you probably never know. Best to forget it and go on with your life. Maybe the police will find the answers. Sunny Bones. Or Lillian. Something about that. Yeah, it does seem like yeah. there's there was other layers there that we didn't see for sure. Oh. <laughs> Barely <laughs> conscious. That's... Ooh. See, we did pretty Season well. Hey, that's, that's not bad. That's more than we yeah. deserve. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Would you like to review your notes? Yes. Were there notes that we could ever review? No, no, not not until okay. now. All right, let's Notebook. let's read them. Open. Person befriended Celie. We befriended her. Okay. Nope. Took food item from kitchen Jeeves's room. Incomplete. Yeah, I know what we missed there. No. Oh. Food from from Celie. Yeah. Okay. Took useful item from body of Lillian, Clarence Sparrow, Dr. Wilbur C. Fields. People found murdered. Mm-hmm. Lillian, Ethel Prune, Gertie D. John, Clarence Sparrow, Dr. Wilbur C. Fields, Jeeves, Fifi. Incomplete. What did we miss? Who did we miss? We must have missed Seely, right? Did Seely die? I thought Seely was just alive at the end of it all. But where mm-hmm. was she? 
Maybe we were supposed to ensure she was in that the, she died. She, she, <laughs> she was in the uh, in the chapel at the very end. There, Gloria's right? not on this like, list. Like we might have file. played a different ver like a different save file. We did. We did. We mm. had to load a save game. Yeah. I don't and then we didn't find why, Gloria. We didn't go back and find... I even remember thinking I should go back and replay that section so that we don't forget it. So the scoring really um, is about, like, witnessing things. Because we didn't witness every death. Yeah, found secret entrance slash exit in... There was a secret that I didn't find. Hmm. Well, not Dining on this room, save game. Hallway, upstairs hallway, billiard room, library, parlor. There's Rudy's room, Goody and Gloria's room, my room. Okay, parlor. I know this. I know. I know also what we're missing here, and it has to like it all kind of what connects. Did... Um, okay. Yeah, because we didn't get the food item from Celie, so we couldn't find the other one. Uh... What was it? Because we're not replaying. This. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> not even that little <laughs> section. There's a really cool Bart uh, pip, uh, Bart bit Bart bull. I died now. <laughs> Big Bart Bull. A, a really cool part that, you know, we've been speculating about that you can see the answer to if we did replay a little yeah. section. But. How far back would we have I to go? I don't know. I don't know if it's worth yeah, it. We did pretty well, part. honestly. Like, yeah, I, mean, I feel like we did a lot better than I was expecting. And I think every, <laughs> I think we're all a little bit surprised. I am surprised we got well, that high. So I have watched a full, like, 100% Super Sleuth playthrough of the Colonel's Bequest in the past. So um, I do know, um, and since it's unlikely we're going to be playing <laughs> this again anytime soon on um, Colonel's Bequest, uh, that all of the bodies are in the cellar. Which we didn't go to. In yeah. a big old oh, is, body pile. Is there a big pile? I wanted There's to see the big, big old body, body pile. pile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll find an image of the body pile, or I'll fi or I'll play until I find it, and I'll put it up on. Yay! Yeah, yeah I want to. Uh, That's I wanna... the body pile. It's great. It's great. I want to. I want to Google that. Right See, now. as far as I remember, it's basically like they just reuse the same sprites for the dead bodies, and they just pile them on top of each other, which I yeah, respect. They just put all the sprites on top. Yeah. Of... Yeah, it was great. It is great. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so what else are we missing here? I took object from the suitcase of Lynn. Valuable object taken, incomplete. We missed yes. something in entire. Yes, we missed the whole section because we didn't. We couldn't do that. We didn't get uh, the food item from Celie. That was like the linchpin for all the other stuff that we're missing. Wow. Oh, okay. I, I, so there was just a I failure the, cascade. Uh, I, I googled the cellar. That's a hell of a. It's great. Pile. It's great. <laughs> Religious article, article discovered Bible. That's the only one. Items requiring close scrutiny. Boot print in the mud, handkerchief, rolling pin, fireplace, poker, glass, cognac, decanter, diary. We missed something there. People with we're not missing habits. more than one of anything. Yeah, we're doing really well. I'm, but I don't know if it, if if we're missing more than one of anything, it would say more than one incomplete. I think incomplete just, just incomplete. says yeah. yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. There could be more. People guilty mm. of embezzlement. <laughs> Uh, people with a telltale scent. <laughs> Colonel Dijon, Lillian, Clarence Sparrow. Okay. Now, I seem to recall there being something about Lillian. And that was the whole, like, sniffing yes. everything thing that we were talking yes. about as well. With a telltale scent. Oh, it's going to kill me. It can, it, fill, fill us in. Fill us in. Where that comes in actually useful. For th for th well, it's just with with the passages, like knowing that like Lillian was the one in the passages. I think that was the whole, and also the colonel yeah. was using them too. Like that's the whole thing right. about that. Yeah, the cigar. Yes. What have you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This person refusing to sell something. Ethel. People romantically involved. Colonel Dijon, Gloria Swansong, Clarence Sparrow, Jeeves, and Fifi. All of them together mm -hmm. in one big polycule. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. Person wishing to end an affair, Gloria Swanson. Has mm -hmm. embarrassing medical history, Gloria. Objects with changed location, Derringer and Dagger. Oh, and, and that's weird else. because we did look at the decanter at some point and that did change location from the bar to Fifi's room, and I'm surprised that we didn't register that. Yeah, that is weird. Aww, location body pile. bodies. Couldn't see the body pile. <sighs> People who struggled physically. <laughs> Colonel Dijon, Rudy Dijon, Clarence Sparrow, and Fifi, and me, <laughs> us, in our cake, cakeness, we physically struggled. Person with surprising secret. Oh, I'm surprised we also didn't get that one. Uh, it's it's something? that uh, Laura was made of cake. <laughs> <laughs> me! Uh, Exclamation <laughs> 
People who use oh. secret passages. Lillian. Okay, so we we, we found um, the goddamn cigar. You Come did. On. Well, yeah. The one who hmm. would, who murdered the most people. So there were multiple murderers. That was the secret, right? Um. Uh... No, actually, I know what the, the secret is, is that the colonel can move around without the wheelchair, but we know that, so I don't know why we didn't get credit yeah. for that. But maybe you have to... Or maybe it's because we were supposed to spot him doing yeah, something. To yeah, look yeah, yeah, at... yeah. Maybe we needed to look at the colonel. Actually, I'm going to load back up and look at the colonel and stuff like that in that same scene after we're done reviewing this. Just just for sure. Well, I, va I vaguely remember watching it... a Let's Play where you can look through the little peepholes and see him actually get up out of the chair in his room uh, and then that would yeah. probably be it oh and that's the end of it is there a way um without going too far back to go to the actual body <laughs> pile or would we have to go way back and do we a have bunch to do of a shit? bunch of stuff because we have to get to go back into celie's house when she let us in we need to get an item from her and then we need to get you know take that item to somewhere else and get a different item and then at the end we we can uh, find a secret passage um that leads yeah, underneath that, take, that would take a hot minute the whole yeah. thing yeah but we did great. Like, I'm really proud of us. Yeah. yeah. I think we, we did a pretty okay job, all things considered. I mean, it, <laughs> it's better than we normally do in these games. So, way to go us. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, again, the, the game is about figuring out what to play, right? Like, you can look up how to play it perfectly and play it in that way. But that's not necessarily the spirit in which it was authored. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are many games, many Sierra games that we do, we did employ a walkthrough. In all fairness, this was done, like, just entirely off the cuff. Um, Having seen, you know, like, like, Let's Plays, yeah. like, I think Luke and I are both like, fairly familiar with this game in terms of watching other people play it and stuff. But yeah, our, our memories yeah. are by no means perfect when it comes to this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I could have planned out a perfect route. Mm hmm to take us through the game and to see all the things that you could see. Mm -hmm. I am disappointed that we that we missed that one critical piece. Mm -hmm. um, and I forgot completely about that. So yeah, you have to take a so, food item from Seely's house. Seely's, yeah, Seely's. Yeah, I mean, I might as well just—they won't be coy with it. Like, there's a carrot on the table, and you take the carrot. Um, which I thought we did, but I guess we restored it or something, or I was got distracted and I forgot. Uh, and then you take that over to Blazes and give him the, the the carrot, and then there's a lantern that's in Blazes' stable cell thingy, and then you can take the lantern, and you need the lantern, and you can light, light it with the match. Mm. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, Colonel Dijon and Rudy are in the midst of a fierce struggle. You see a hypodermic needle. Okay, we've already looked at yeah. that. So why don't we Look shoot the other one now this calls. time? Wait for them to line up and shoot both. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be yeah, I'd love that. Special. Shoot. Rudy, why not? You've shot and wounded Rudy. Uh Thank you, young lady, or Laura. That was uh, some mighty fine shooting for a gal, I guess. I, I owe you my life, don't I? <laughs> Why, this nephew was trying to kill me with poison in one of uh, Wilbur's uh, hypodermic needles. Oh, you know, it's terrible what's been happening here tonight. I should invite everyone to tell him about my will, and they ended up killing each other over it. It's real, real bummer. Anyway, uh, truthfully, I was keeping my eye on everyone in the house tonight, or so I thought. I, I didn't see any of the murders. And it wasn't until I met Rudy in my bedroom and he told me what happened. You know, I couldn't believe it. I was uh, flabbergasted, as they say. Anyway, he told me that my niece Lillian had finally gone totally berserk and out of a crazy jealousy was killing everyone that she thought had gotten between her and me. Uh... Yep. Anyway, she managed to just about murder everyone till she was attacked. Uh, she attacked Rudy with my derringer, and Rudy managed to wrestle the gun from her in self-defense and uh, uh, killed her instead. My nephew, seeing as everybody was already dead, decided to finish the job by killing me with a hypodermic needle and uh, say I died of a heart attack induced by uh, terrible deeds my niece had done and whatnot. 
Anyway, I can't stand much more. This Laura, please find Celie and tell her to fire up one of the signal rockets that we use to uh, to summon help in these uh, emergency type times and whatnot. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So if Celie had emergency rockets. Yes. Why did we wait until now? <laughs> yeah, you've been a loyal servant to me for many years, Celie, and uh, both Beauregard and Blaze trust you and decided to leave all my money to you, provided you take care of my animals for the rest of their lives and situations. Of course, oh, uh, I, I can't think of... <laughs> can't do anything. Nothing else I'd rather do. Thank you, sir. Oh right, right, right. That's your line. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You know, you know, Beauregard. People are funny creatures. They're greedy. They're rude. They're selfish. And that's why we live all the way out here to get away from them. But uh, we couldn't get away from them completely, could we, boy? <laughs> no, not completely. But uh, everything will be okay now, I suppose, as long as we have each other. Me and my housekeeper and some random red-headed girl <laughs> living in my estate. So who wants some cake? You guys want some cake? No, oh, man. Do I ever? Come on in. Huh. Uh, the, the, the Colonel's story was not that implausible, though his demeanor mm. was odd for sure. I think that was just my voice. <laughs> No, he had lots of like erms and ums. Yeah. Like, oh, um, I uh, guess I owe you my life. Uh, you know. He got away with it. I I kind of don't hate the version of events where uh, she gets all the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm down with this. It doesn't matter. Well, Horrible people yeah. died. <laughs> you know. It's true. As long as Lillian wasn't our best friend. Oh, it said Lillian for the people one who murdered the most people. That changed this time around. Yeah. Oh, right, because the, the colonel told us Yay. about it. So Lillian was indeed one of the You know those. what? I like this ending better. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad we checked it out. Yeah. I mean, like, I, my initial suggestion for who to shoot was just based on the fact that like the older a man is, the more evil. Well, he he's was also like he also saved like he was a war hero who saved that other guy from the battlefield. So that was like a decent thing he did once. But yeah, I mean, on the whole, probably yeah. I'm down. And men are kind of like goblins. It's not that they're all evil. It's just that they tend <laughs> to be. <Aww. laughs> hey, should we do some more? Should we do? Should we do some uh, Colonel's B questions? Yeah. Yeah. I think that and is an excellent idea. Let's have our accident. <laughs> our accidental final Colonel's B questions for this game, anyway. Uh, well, it's it, it's nice because it is the end of 2023. Mm -hmm. This is the last normal game episode of 2023, uh, with the exception of our live stream to come later this year. Um, so on the 28th, I guess. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's nice. We we finished the year with finishing a game. Look That's that. never happened. It it hasn't. I don't think. Nope. If there's, like, really significant demand, or if a lot of you are, like, really bitterly disappointed that we never went to that cellar and found all those bodies, then let us know in the comments. We might entertain that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well, maybe that's what we might. do during the, during the, uh, the live show, is, is go back to an earlier save game and see if we can find the, yep. the pile of bodies. That'd be very cool. Not a chance. All well, right. Drinking. Colonel's be question. <laughs> I'm just shutting it down for no reason. <laughs> it's fine. We can do that. You're allowed to just not want to. Like, I do think this is a charming game. I do think it's ahead of its time in many ways. It is also a little frustrating to interact with. It's not necessarily the comfiest movement, to, uh, comfiest medium to swim around in. No, that's that's fair. It's fair. Um, we okay? Yeah. Uh, fun for Algernon. Colonel's be question. Um, this could be read as Jerry Seinfeld. What was the deal with the hilarious house of Frightenstein? I mean, 
Have you seen this? A green Dracula called the Count trying to make his Frankenstein, who he calls Brucey, live again. And the rest of the show is a takeoff of laughing. With the actual Vincent Price reading poems between every segment. How did they get well over a hundred one-hour episodes at the CHCH TV in Hamilton in the early 1970s? Did Canadian taxpayers foot the bill? And why did I wake up at 6 a.m. every Saturday to watch it? Are we crazy? Listen. I have <clears throat> no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I do. I do. And okay, let's play a little let's play a little clip of um uh the f- the <laughs> the uh where is it? What's it called? The hilarious house of Frightenstein. Uh, in the background and let me tell you about it Uh, because I'm going to tell you guys it is not good it is not it might be funny but I'll never know is it hilarious no I no (laughs) it is it is weird and it is like an hour long and it is very Canadian in nature but it's very horror based (laughs) And the only thing I remember is the guy f- named Igor, who was who was a big fat green guy in his green makeup, got all over his shirt, and he had fake eyebrows that were just way too thick. And that's the real Vincent Price, like it's a real Vincent Price. And uh, yeah, here just skip skip ahead a little, cause oh god, it's on space. Uh, you guys, remember the Space Network? Mm-hmm. God. I do. God. Watched a lot of TNG reruns on that shit as a kid. Yeah. Um but yeah, they would all they there's basically they would have oh, the, the 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 goddamn Dracula. The goddamn e- Oh my god. What a nightmare. Anyway. It's a hell of an intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, look. I've never seen this before. This is new to me. It's pretty awesome. I was expecting like a theme song or something. Maybe that's what we're getting now. I imagine a media savvy listener could really accurately carbon date me by my statement about watching TNG reruns on space (laughs) as a kid. Oh, yeah. Okay, they're really not putting a lot of effort into that intro. Oh, just just pick, just pick. Yeah, and like pick. Yeah, that one's fine. I love that this is where the episode has gone. So they have, well, I mean, this is what we do, right? <laughs> um, so this is the, they have like a Wolfman who's sort of based on Wolfman Jack. It's not particularly. Um, yeah, but no, you guys got to see the vampire. You got to see the vampire. Just... I, this is so weird to me. I've never seen any part of this. No. And listen, it was so, it was so, it's so not, um, yeah, you need to just look for, like, like, search for it, search for the Hilarious House of Frightenstein full episode. It's on Frightenstein Vinyl, is the channel. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I just need you to, just to, just to peer, oh yeah, there he is. Uh, just like pull ahead, pull past. The, oh yeah, there we go. Those are the two guys. These guys. Are- these people. These these guys have a weird job. They're doing their job right now. They're doing okay. this for their job. This. So okay, so this was on a lot when I was a kid, and I, unlike Fun for Algernon, made the choice not to watch it. <laughs> I saw this and I was like, "No, nah, I don't. Th- I, that's not for me. This is not for were me. You, I'm not doing." Were it. you a particularly discriminating child? I I valued my free time mm. and God. They're singing. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. They're they're singing like cartoon sailors what... pumping their fists in time. <laughs> the it, it it is such a bizarre show, and like oh, they're so unnerving to look at in their makeup. I've got a I've got a deep hatred for what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> I just instinctively I just I don't like it. I don't. 
so that's their that's the Frankenstein in the back that they're trying to bring his name Brucey. Uh, anyway, listen, I'm not gonna. I don't know. Fun for Algernon. I don't know why you dug this up. Is 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 There's a, someone's name Frankenstein? Hmm. Uh, is that the surname of Dracula within this canon? I can't even tell you that because I didn't watch it enough to know if that was the case. That might be Frankenstein, but I think that's just. It's, it's, oh, so there's a separate. <laughs> there's a separate Frankenstein. There's a bunch of stupid shit on this. Just like, just like. like that's a cute dog. It's a very cute dog. Pick, what, pick, a, what a little cutie. Pick a random spot. <laughs> good, good oh, one. Oh fuck me! <laughs> I like a big stupid monster costume. I don't know what is what is what's Green Guy going through I, there right I now. I hope to God you're actually recording this, Luke. <laughs> oh, Otherwise, yeah, no, this is going to be so difficult. This to is deal getting with. recorded to the screen. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Anyway, this this is oh, very God. meta, though. We are on YouTube <clears throat> watching a YouTube video. Is this is this a react video now? <laughs> this look, part of our charm is our audience engagement. We they engage with us, we engage back, right? Like that's how we do it. Yeah. And when like Spy Spy Vulu, for instance, put in a request for us to describe Canadian holidays, and we did, you know? That's what we do. Someone comments first and we make sure they're seen. Yeah. Like we have a small audience of commenters, and yeah, part of our charm is that you get seen, you get recognized. I don't want to oversell our reasonableness because we're not. I can't necessarily no. commit to being reasonable all no. the time, but yeah. Can you imagine you know? if every channel like took a comment and just did this for like ten minutes? I <laughs> just <laughs> what this is. He's just someone described this as having a punk ethos. Who was that? <laughs> Uh, I think, I think if, uh, this is 47 minutes. I, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you mentioned it was an hour, but yeah, I mean, of course with commercials, but wow, that's really long for this. They made a hundred of these. That's like <laughs> a miracle right there. Right. I know. Someone right? should have been well, canonized. It was, it was the seventies. <laughs> you know, there wasn't much on, uh, that was fun for Algernon basically saying how, uh, we did, did two episodes in a row of improv Christmas storytelling and uh, <coughs> goose culling. This is oh. fascinating, though. It... Punk ethos is a far too generous. Uh, why are you caressing a deer? Uh, p- punk What's ethos this? is far too generous a description. Look, guys, I th- that's two Exploration forks. Exploration of physics. That's two forks and a cork. He made a cork fork. I am pretty sure this guy... I guess Frightenstein is doing little science experiments for us. I don't think that's Frightenstein. I think that's another guy. That's another old man? (laughs) (laughs) He does look... His chin is shorter. His chin is shorter. Uh, Yeah. I I, I generally don't distinguish between old men. Uh... Anyway, look, all I'm going to say about that is uh, thank you for for hauling this up for all of us. Yeah. Fun for Algernon. You're, you're... I don't know if I can thank you for that. This is a real intrusion into my life. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, sometimes they give it back. I think Fr- Frightenstein there might be fake old. He's got some real facial prosthetics going on. Wait, that's a, yeah, that's the kid version of the Dracula. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an even younger dracula hmm. a draculing if you will anyway this was a real show <laughs> mm. what a bummer and and i'm gonna go out on a limb here and and say fun for algernon we can't answer any of those kernels be questions i can't answer that how this made a hundred episodes i i can't answer did we foot the bill as canadians and i definitely can't answer why you woke up at 6 a.m every saturday to watch uh canadian television 
as a, g- a guideline more than a rule is pretty bad. Mm, yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Very much. There is good television made here, but not by Canadians. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most of our good TV comes from either the UK or the States. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, and a lot of our bad TV comes from both of those places, too. It's part of what contributes to my general impression that Canadians have no actual culture. We do, but it's this, right? It's true. If one of us, one of our most like significant television offerings uh, of the last like decade is Trailer Park Boys, um, yeah, that says a lot about Canada, Canada as a uh, as an entertainment. I, uh, I do mean white Canadians. I should yeah. I should specify mm-hmm. we, <laughs> Canadians of European descent definitely have a. Like it's not that we have no culture; it's just that it is beneath contempt. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was it was a real it was a real thing back in the eighties that when you know when something Canadian came on, you could just every Canadian could tell mm-hmm. it was Canadian. You just knew yeah. it was just based on the first few seconds. You could there was the picture quality, something about the actors mm-hmm. and their earthiness. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> in in the way that Mega Blocks emulates Lego and <laughs> contributes nothing else. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, and and this was the seventies. So it there there was even it was like the wild wild west, you know. Anyway, um, that's that's the only answer I can give, and I'm not even that uh, not even that sure. You can kind of get a um, distinct vibe from like BBC television and from like various like uh US networks like uh recently some Doctor Who specials uh dropped on Disney Plus and it was shocking to see them there because they were extremely BBC yeah you know i was like oh this is some shitty television i like doctor who uh you know i've watched it for years i watched some of like the original william hartnell shit from like the radio era of television but like, uh, it's a pretty bad TV. It's really shocking to see it on Disney Plus. Not that there's not other bad TV on there, but like, I, BBC I, television I, has this real vibe to. By it. By the way, I loved the Doctor Who specials. They were great. The, 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 no, I ones. I thoroughly enjoyed them. They were, they, they they were kind they of were fucking great. What what a great farewell to David. Tennant. Oh yeah, uh, listen, guys. Um, well, if you love if you love like the 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 new Doctor Who like from two thousand five on. It's freaking it's, it's you need to watch it so good i'm i'm not generally susceptible to nostalgia but you know the david Tennant era has a fond place in my heart so it was nice to see it revisited and yeah you know it's great um okay but uh anyway uh the the vibe that canadian television gives you is just bad it's just bad like <laughs> B- bbc gives you that kind of doctor who vibe of like <laughs> Like, yeah, for, for BBC shows, it's like, oh, if, if only they had a little bit of money to throw at this. And, and for the record, fun for Algernon, I'm not saying that my judgment was better than yours or that I had better taste. I just, that watching those two guys, because I would never see it at the start, watching those two fools just in their little makeup, I was, I was like, no, this isn't for me. And I just... They, they were fools, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of out and out fools. <laughs> yeah, like on purpose. Like that's what they were Jesters. doing. They were they, like, they were doing like, that. Like like they were real clowns those two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Lord Clowns in clown makeup. <laughs> Lord C now has a Colonel's good question. I'm t- I'm sorry, I'm just trying to move through these because yes. it's after midnight here. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fine. It <laughs> <clears throat> can, oh. can we get that bloated green smurf off the screen please thank you <laughs> I'm sure he was a very nice man in real life uh, he seems like a very sweet man yes. yeah um, uh, Colonel's new question is it just me or does the way the game is titled make you kind of want the series to be about Colonel Henri de Jean and not Laurie, Laura Bow? I mean, the main title is The Colonel's Bequest and the subtitle is A Low, Laura Bow Mystery. It's not like King's Quest 4 was titled Perils of Rosella dash A King's Quest 4. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I just wanted to see more of the Colonel. 
There is something about his ornery and cantankerous personality that makes me interested in his story more than Laura's, like the second game could have been the Colonel's Bequest to Dixie Lane mystery and be about Colonel trying to open a new bank account at a local bank in a nearby swamp island and you control Dixie Lane, a newly hired accountant, trying to work out the mystery of decoding the Colonel's shitty handwriting on the forms he has here. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone in the bank starts dying for some unrelated <laughs> reason. Where was I going with this? I don't even remember what the question was supposed to be. I'm sorry, I'm feeling a bit incoherent today. Anyway, do you agree? Well, your name is Lord Senile, so... <laughs> it works. You know, That's true. yeah. That's true. Uh, your conclusions are baffling. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. <laughs> Uh, that's, I'm, not, I'm not saying that like I really I love I love where your head went with that. I'm like I'm I I love it, but that's that's an astonishing conclusion to reach. Uh, but I guess I can see how you got there from the title. I mean, you know, it, it is common practice for mysteries to be named after the main character. Like I've been watching a lot of Columbo recently. I've been watching some Poirot and some Rocker Rockford Files, mm. you know, the 1970s show with Julia's mm. favorite opening mm. theme mm. with a Julia <laughs> repelling sound <laughs> that plays at the start. Yeah. It's like turn undead. Yeah, like if, if ever, like for whatever reason, I'm at anybody's house and I've overstayed my welcome. All you need to do is just put, put on the intro of the rock on, on your phone, and I will You're... just leave. I will not say anything. I will just get up and put my shoes on and leave. It makes me wonder if you're some sort of esoteric <laughs> vampire, like not not like the regular like blood sucking, repelled by crosses and silver and whatnot, but like some some weird, you know. <laughs> obscure vampire subtype. I could be. I, I would not be. I wouldn't be surprised. But it's, yeah, it's ex extremely specific, I, but it's actually very easy to defend against me then. S s well, I mean, you'd have to have a clip queued well, you up. You can just find it you on know? your YouTube on your phone. It's so you know. it's so easy to get. Yeah, I feel like I feel like depending on what other vampiric <laughs> gifts you have, you could kill the person before they brought it up on their phone. Like, not everyone has that on speed dial, so to speak. Yeah, how, would you, would would your murderous tendency go way up if you knew they were about to do it? I don't know. I mean, like everyone's I, always on their phone all the time, I, so I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd be able to suss that out. Yeah, I definitely couldn't queue up the Rockford theme on my phone's YouTube like before somebody killed me with vampire magic. I, I don't like my odds of that at all. So I, I just want to address the question itself. Yes, please. Yeah. The Colonel's bequest has nothing to do with the Colonel and everything to do with the bequest, bequest, which is his will. You know, that's all this is about. It's actually named after the treasure that everybody is mm -hmm. sort of seeking. Mm -hmm. And that's the... Uh, Friends we made along the way. Yeah, it's... The, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's got... Yeah, so, it, you know, and, and I that actually, I don't... I assume continues in the... Uh, it's, it's the MacGuffin, right? Like, this one was the will. The next one, I assume, is some sort of dagger. The uh, of yeah, like of none of none of the Sierra games. I, I too took it to be a MacGuffin. Yeah, none of the Sierra yeah. games actually like they they see they sound like on the surface that they follow a similar naming convention, but they actually really don't. Like King's Quest is you know King Graham King's Quest, but Space Quest it's not called like Wilco's Quest, right? Or or Janitor's Quest. It's yeah. you know it's like called Space Quest, and you know Colonel's Bequest also has like it sounds the same but very different because yeah, it is the MacGuffin name. Yeah. So, like, I, I want to be clear. I'm not saying this in, like, a mean way, but your conclusion is astonishing. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a weird... Like, I just mean that literally. I am astonished. But, uh, yeah, I guess I, I, can, I do follow the logic of your argument. I, yeah, no, He's a great right? character. Like, I like the colonel as a character, and he probably did say more than Laura did in the game. Like, line for line. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody did. <laughs> Beauregard had wonder. more lines. It's true. I almost wonder, though, if the it would have been a more successful series or people would have, like, understood it to be more of a series if it was called Lorabo Mysteries. The Colonel's Lorabo Bequest? Lorabo Mysteries 2, The Dagger of oh, Amon Ra, Lorabo Mysteries 3, or whatever, mm. you know? Like, yeah, exactly. Lorabo Mysteries, The Colonel's Bequest, mm. you know? Like, the, um... you know, um, the, the Orient Express. It's like, you know... Or, or what is it, Agatha Christie's 
Uh, although it's a Poirot mystery. Yeah, I guess it's so called the Orient Express, a Hercule Her- 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 Poirot mystery. So I guess it's the same kind of a, yeah, yeah naming convention. I think the uh, the creator of um, Knives Out and Glass mm-hmm. Onion was a little bit bummed to call uh, Glass Onion a Knives Out mm-hmm. mystery as a Yeah, that really subtitle. needed to be a Benoit yes. Blanc mystery. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, yeah. I understand the, the reality. reality. Yeah, like, uh, people, people en masse are like, are like a termite colony in terms of intelligence, if that. <laughs> so, like, I totally get, like, uh, why that is the horrible reality in which we live, but it mm-hmm. is a drag. Yeah. That, that had yeah, to be the case. Agreed. Um, okay. <clears throat> we have uh, from Amberling If Laura is cake, then would mm-hmm. King Graham be a gingerbread man? Or is ginger too much spice for him? Well, you know, if you take away the ginger, you, you get. Graham cracker. Oh my God. Yeah, I, th- I, I yes, I was going to say I think he would be a graham <laughs> cracker rather than a gingerbread man. King Graham Which speaks well to his blandness. Not to say that graham crackers themselves, like graham as we crackers. know them today, are bland. Yeah. As I love graham crackers, they get that yeah. sort of honey mm. flavor to them. But graham crackers, as a concept, the original graham cracker created by Graham was made as a masturbation re- like a uh, uh, deterrent. <laughs> I thought you were going to say aid. I thought that was cornflakes. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought that was cornflakes too. Is it both? Uh, yeah, they're, they're uh, I believe. Yeah, maybe both. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that like Graham and the Graham crackers mm. were meant to be like this dense, mostly flavorless cracker that was supposed to like avoid mm. titillating <clears throat> you enough that you would never feel like you had to like beat the bishop or whatever right like <laughs> yeah 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 i uh i think comparing king graham to a graham cracker is uh it, it i think it's an apt comparison because while graham crackers are not unpalatable they certainly aren't a titillating food stuff there are very few titillating food stuffs Right, like I don't even think that you have to make an anti-titillating food stuff, really, because most things aren't. So that's not needed. And I think anybody who's into titillating food stuff can make any food <laughs> titillating. So I wouldn't worry about that. But yeah, and I, I, well, s- certainly like a chocolate-dipped strawberry, I think, is more titillating than a graham cracker. Absolutely, fresh out of the. And sleeve. you know, we give King Graham a lot of shit on this show, but like, he's a he's lovable. Is he? In his own way. Well, I like him in five. In five he's okay. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't hate him. He's that sort of protagonist. I think I know? think Graham Cracker might actually fit him, you know, because you can if somebody says okay, unless you're maybe Julia, if somebody says, I I kinda like King Graham, you'll be like, Oh, I get it. It's a little What's there to like? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's got those dimples. He does? And that hat. Alright. Sure. And he wants to save his family. Oh, how unique. <laughs> like I, I I know as I know as much about King Graham's personality as I do about Laura Boats. That's fair. That's fair. No like it's except like I I I, I don't I don't <laughs> hate him any more than I hate well, Laura Bow will, for being kind of anonymous. I'll tell you this. The, we know more about Laura because the game tells us what she's not. And uh, like, yeah. vi- she's not violent. Mm-hmm. She's not into picking up gross things. <laughs> she's not. Into, she's not into doing a lot of stuff. The, the prohibitive yeah. nature mm-hmm. of her actions. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. But like in general, like I'll be excited to revisit the adventures of Laura Bow next game, and I'm ha- always happy to see an appearance by King Graham, even though he's not necessarily the most. Uh, intricate no. fellow. Yeah. Like, in the first one, he wants a new job, and then in the second one, he wants to have a wife. Like, it's, how do you, you know, like I said, unique. It's not, it's just, uh. <laughs> Look. It doesn't have a lot going on. Like, like certain protagonists, like, uh, you kind of get what sort of person Roger yes, Wilco exactly. is. He's sort of a charming yeah. fuck-up. Gabriel Knight, although you have guys Graham. haven't played it. Oh, Freddie Farkas has a very strong personality. Absolutely. King Graham was was only in three of seven, or it was only the protagonist of three of seven of the King's quests. Yeah, he was a lot more interesting in the remake. 
one, three, he's, and five. He's That's sort of it. from the uh, he's sort of from the same era as like the Gold Rush <laughs> protagonist, though. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, Who doesn't have a lot is, going on? There was on? only one game where they even really got to ex like explore his personality, being King's Quest Five, right? Because two uh, was him as well, but three was Gwydion slash Alexander. Th four <laughs> was Rosella. Mm -hmm. Um, six was Alexander again, and seven was Rosella and Valenice, right? Like, yeah, he he follows the pattern of like um, he, he follows in some ways sort of the pattern of like a D and D character too, where the impact that the character has on the world is often more interesting than the character himself. Mm, like it's yeah. in if you play D and D for a long time, like we have, it's kind of more interesting to tell the story about the guy's kids and the guy's like. The things are more interesting in retrospect than they are in the actual, like, moment. There's a lot of, like, bland human fighter types who nonetheless leave an interesting legacy just because they were involved in shit. Yeah, yeah. King Graham's kind of like that to me. Like, yeah, he's not that though, interesting, though, but I kind of like the world that exists around him. Though I think we would all agree that Ginger is too much spice mm -hmm. for King Graham. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To answer your question more directly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Graham Cracker is probably more apt. Because I'm Ginger. thinking uh, of King's Quest V, and you guys are saying, well, yeah, he had the most personality in King's Quest V, and I'm thinking about the game, and so he's friendly, and. He's never been blander than King's Quest V. He's brave Listen. and good humored. He, he's patient. And patient? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, one would have to be. He's hanging out with he's, Cedric I, this entire time, and he doesn't. Uh, I. <laughs> I actually think he was more interesting when you could just when he was just a blank slate to project whatever you wanted on. I actually don't know that the glimpse of his personality in five did him any yeah, favors I at know. all. Look. We give him a lot of shit and maybe he deserves it. But he was a he's a pioneer. He's a pioneer, I agree you know? with that. Yeah. And because of that, you know, I'm I'm gonna give uh, him a pass. Sure. I, I, I actually thought it was weird when five went back to King mm. Graham. That seemed like a misstep to me because leaving him as the like um, the blank slate that you project whatever you want to, whatever personality you want to on him. Um, and then a bunch of people who are more specific in their motives who branch off from him. It seemed like a better well, format. To I me. think like people had seen the it, King's Quest series like develop, you know, graphically and technologically and. People are like, yeah, it's a shame that Graham got shafted in those really, really early sort of primitive games and uh, doesn't get to do anything cool in the new version. So I think they were like, that that could be fun. That could be fun. I didn't hate to see him, but it seemed like a regression. Like, I'd rather kind of know what happens next. It's it's like seeing uh, fucking Harrison Ford put on the stupid Han Solo costume and pretend to give a shit about the Wookiee costume next to him. <laughs> Like, he hated it. I hated he was there. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> just, just you know. Um, yeah. It's okay to let characters die. Oh, uh, Before we sign off, because I know this is getting long, um, we've got uh, we've got a comment from Citizen Scribbler, guys, and it's a it's a it's a it's a doozy. <laughs> uh, it's just basically uh, it's like I don't really want to tell you to run your channel, but since you have specifically, I can tell you this. Level zero NPCs are at their best in spurts of 16 to 22 minutes. So long form attempts of improv. Missed that one today. Oh, well, wow. We missed that one. It was that. And uh, long form attempts of improv comedy have no real audience to speak of for a reason. Uh, this could be the top uh, Sierra play channel and a real money maker if we didn't sell self sabotage and uh, do your process. Right. Now, I understand this comes from a place of love. Citizen Scribbler has been with us mm -hmm. for a long time, mm -hmm. long time, uh, and I imagine it must be jarring to uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, see this. And and as it is, we've missed nearly half the content of this game during the lack of focus. I don't know about that. I don't know if we could have got that that uh, that score. We got we season PI, didn't we, or something? Yeah, we got we got the yep. second best. Um, almost justifies a second playthrough. I don't know about that. That's not happening. Um, <laughs> and uh, this style of play won't work with the next uh, Laura Bow. Um, yeah. So you know, we keep going whole. And and uh, here's the thing. At no point 
do we as a as a group sit down and have meetings about what we're going to do and what our big plans are for the <laughs> year? <coughs> everything you're hearing, everything the show has turned into has happened uh, organically over time. And you can see it happening in um, in a Quest for Glory. We sort of just, things started to just bloat up when we had tons of time to kill and lots of grinding to do. And we had to fill that time with other things. And then it just sort of became its own thing. And it sort of like exploded into what it's become today. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, <clears throat> I, is, are, I feel like we're being, I feel like changing it at this point would be not us, disingenuous, you know what I mean? I, th I think to address uh, some of uh, Citizen Scribbler's concerns, though, like, the channel has evolved over time, too. Like, if you go back and watch Gold Rush, it's very different kind of thing the pacing is different whole different group of people so like i think it is reasonable to be a longtime fan and to not necessarily oh, like all the sure. things that it's evolved into for sure and the general premise that like a dash of professionalism could probably make more of the channel absolutely um it's uh like i think all of your comments are like valid right like we were not necessarily as engaged with this game as we are with some other games um and uh like part of it is what I said earlier. This is one of those games where it's like uh, it doesn't necessarily do the work of helping you engage with it. It's more about you trying to insinuate yourself into an ongoing story, which is kind of a challenging thing to um, engage with in the midst of a long week. The, the other thing I want to say is that like this is kind of a hobby for us. Like um, we're not those content providers where this is our you know primary gig. Um, so, yeah, as a result, it kind of uses whatever leftover brain power we yeah, have at the end of a long this, week. This show costs us money. <laughs> yeah. A, a large amount, as yeah. a matter of fact. Yeah. And, like, overall, as for us being, like, a, the top Sierra play, that's never something we were aiming to do. Um, we'd rather just be ourselves and and do this for fun. And if other people can get on board with that, then that's great. And clearly people are. People are enjoying it. And uh, all, all that said, we were maybe especially spacey during this playthrough. I think that's a valid <laughs> yeah, that <is> point. <laughs> um, and it like just just because we just because this is not our main thing doesn't mean we can't strive to do it slightly better should, than we sure, sometimes absolutely. do. I I think it's really like actually like genuinely sweet. And I'm being 100 percent serious that yeah, you feel like yeah, like we, we this is an awesome channel with a lot of pot potential, you know. Because you would always want, you know, the people that watch you or friends or anything to think, you know, you guys are great. In in in, I can't. I think that's a pretty high compliment, actually. It means a lot to us that you yes. give a shit Absolutely. about this. Uh, because, like, we do too. Uh, sometimes it doesn't necessarily seem like that, but like, we're not necessarily the most motivated group of people. We wouldn't do this every week if we didn't give a shit about it. And, um, so, and yeah. like, we're not, we have no intention of turning into a long form improv comedy <laughs> no. channel. <laughs> that just happened no. organically. We're not like, you know, uh, yeah, we're not professionals. We're not doing like from the Magic Tavern. We're not doing like role playing podcasts you know we're not doing you know from like th three quarters of the current hosts are part of an old like D, D group and like yeah that's what derails a lot of our sessions is just someone makes an offhanded funny comment and it unravels into this like stupid like bit that lasts for hours I, uh, ironically if we wanted more views we, we'd probably double down on that and just become a role-playing like D, D channel because uh those uh you know the... it'd be more in line with the ch channel name honestly <laughs> yeah yeah uh does because that's what those you know uh you know critical role we might be able to get some of the uh like you, 20. you know those guys that's what all they do that's all, all that is is improv comedy with dice like we we <laughs> might be able to get some of the beans out of our system if we did a little actual play role playing um as like a different thing uh it's quite a lot of like cerebral load to do mm -hmm. that though yeah and this is thursday every thursday night and it, it's almost like it's 20 to 1 for me 
right now. It's like, we're just, you know, we're doing, we're doing what we can. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm glad you commented. Yeah. I am. Yeah. We really appreciate mm-hmm. the feedback. I hope, uh, I hope that addresses, at least acknowledges some of your concerns, uh, if not addresses Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And we will keep going whole. Yeah, I think the channel will continue to just organically change over time. It's been like eight years, so of course, like that's only to be expected. And I, I feel like it's a positive, really positive thing for me to be here, and I, I enjoy it a lot. And I look forward to Thursdays. And I know that yeah, people look forward to the weekend when they get when they get to watch it. I think the net gain to the world is a positive thing, and I think that's most most important and awesome thing about it. Darn right. Yeah. And, and- you are definitely not wrong to question either our sanity or our professionalism. No, no. Though. That's not, no yes. one's going to, no no one can construct like a coherent argument against anyone. Yeah, I feel like, me. you know, in our everyday work lives, we, you know, there's a very high standard that we all have to meet. And it's kind of nice to have something that's a bit less, less demanding. Absolutely. Yeah. The one, the one thing I think you could maybe argue against is that we could be one of the top channels. I think that's very flattering, but like... Very I think unlikely. technically that's true, but in the same way that there's a universe where I'm an enchanted talking monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, uh, we we uh, love you too. Man, yeah. you've been around for a long time. So keep uh, keep watching and we'll... Uh, hey, we gave you a whole episode of just gameplay that first one. <laughs> yeah. And true. like, I think most of that the games have like a different vibe to them. We finished. I know, weird, eh? Uh, but yeah, it's great, and we love having everybody. Also, I need to give a shout out to uh, uh, Natal Morales' uh, story about when they save Christmas with the uh, mm-hmm. uh, describing the elves as the casual soullessness of a carp. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that was incredible. What an incredible turn of I phrase, and what an incredible mm-hmm. story. If you guys haven't read the comments, yeah. like I know a lot of you guys comment, but if you haven't read the comments, you should go down. There's our our uh, our PCs are mm-hmm. are witty, uh, and we 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 love love them, so. so amazing. Like and also, of course, you know, twelve op and the music and everything. You, this is like the most amazing like little community here. It's awesome. I agree. Also, some some great yes. Santa lore in general about the origins of Santa and yeah. what he's become. There's there's some good shit there. I think we talked before about how like Saint Nicholas is a pile of oozing bones somewhere. Yes. <laughs> it's like a like an ichor comes out of his bones, and that's like part of the miracle that made him a saint. And uh, I think I said the literal words that I would prefer if Santa was a dripping skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> In some previous episode of a previous year, but we don't need to relitigate all of that. But I, I really, and for for those sorts of weird reasons, I enjoyed mm-hmm. reading all of those comments as well. Uh, amazing. Uh, so we're gonna go because I need to go to bed. I actually have to get up in the morning and drive my kids to school. Um, what a bummer! <laughs> it's just them going to school. Yeah, like, geez, what it's are you their, even doing? It's, that it's my daughter's last well, day before the 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 holidays. Um, great. So. She's pretty stoked. Yeah. So. And it's my last day, too. So I got to go. Exciting. But, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, so this is was the last uh, episode of, of, of an actual game playthrough for 2023. Uh, thank you, as always, for joining us uh, for another year. Um, I, we didn't really do an anniversary episode this year either, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll sort of put that together with this one. And it was, it's nice to to finish off the year with also finishing yeah. off the game. And so we'll do the, we'll, we're still planning on the live stream mm-hmm. on December twenty eighth. Yeah, um, I'll try and find some way to post about that leading up to it. Um, and uh, we're yeah. Uh, aside from that, though. That's that's a wrap for 2023. So um, enjoy your unless, uh, unless holiday. We somehow get together and do a Christmas episode, which we which we may or may not do. It would be weird to be the first year where we don't do one, but um, we'll see how the how the chips fall there. Maybe the the twenty the uh, December 18th is a sort of Christmas slash New Year's special. Who knows? But. We'll see what happens. I mean, we, I might yeah. be able to sneak in 15 minutes at some point over the next couple of days before. You have yeah. to leave, mm-hmm. Luke. So, yeah, precisely. Um, but yeah, well, we, if you get one, great. If you don't, 
We, no, we tried. <laughs> and you definitely get yeah. we're gonna definitely try for that live yeah. stream on uh, the twenty eighth. Yeah. So we're gonna make it in the effort. In in the meantime, everyone try to enjoy your holiday rituals as mm -hmm. best you can. If you're like me and it's not your best time of year, then uh, we'll try to check in during the live stream. But you know, yeah. uh, down a pint of eggnog in one eye watering breath or whatever it is you do during the holidays, and we'll talk yeah. to you guys soon. All right, hooray! Ah. So until 2024, stick and stick stay. And stay. Stick and stay. Yep. Bye, guys. <laughs>